Hello again, Craig here from Craig Colley Music. Today we're going to add a grand piano part to the song, Kenny's song, which we're taking from start to finish. Let's get started laying down this grand piano track. Hi, Craig here from Craig Colley Music. Thanks for joining me today, whether you're watching day or night. Uh, we know these things go around the world, so we never know what time you're watching it in. For me right now, it's somewhere in the late afternoon. I've got a really bright uh, patio out here. That's why I had the blinds pulled. Uh, otherwise, it would be blinding. It's a beautiful canyon, and unfortunately, we just can't have it showing because it's just too bright out there. But today, we are working our way through a song called Kenny's Song, which we've talked about in the last few videos. Uh, today, we're going to lay the grand piano part down. In review, if you're watching for the first time, you might want to back up and watch a couple of videos prior to this where we set up the song, we talked about the writing, the arrangement, uh, the theory behind it, story behind it, and then we have also laid down the reference track and some markers in the, in the sequence. I used Digital Performer by Marker the Unicorn for my sequencing software. This is DP10. Point, I'm not sure what the point uh, version is, but the latest one as I record this. And also I have a reference drum track that I use as a click track along with the click plane. So you're going to hear all that as, as we're working through it. So today we're going to lay down the grand piano part. And first, what I always do is make sure everything's working prior to starting the recording. So we're going to test that right now. And I'm going to start the trackers at eight count. And I need to zoom in a little bit to it. My, my laptop is off the side here. I use a Mac Airbook with a screen share to show the screens from the computers that are in the studio. So there's a little bit of a lag time. Also, it's extremely hard to see at times because of its size. And functionality is a little bit different. But we're going to give it an a eight count, record a little bit of the piano, make sure that it's working. So there's our count. And we'll come in here. And I'm going to play that back just to make sure that we've got the audio working correctly. So I'll back it up here. Sounds good. And I've already done a lot of this prep, obviously, prior to recording today. So I'm going to undo that because I don't need any of that. Back it up to the beginning. And in this song, there's a lot of places where the band is going to be doing some things and the piano will be not as dominant as other parts. Uh, so that's kind of preset pre in my mind what's going to happen. But it is repetition over and over again. So sometimes you tend to lose your place when there's not a reference of anything else at the time. As tracks build, it becomes easier. So uh, one of the things that I always do is rehearse this thing like crazy. So when I'm laying down the track I'm going to do right now, I'm going to do it as flawlessly as possible, obviously. But we also want the feel. We want the the reason that we're doing these doing music is to project a feeling and express emotion and, and to share that experience. There's nothing like music that, that connects us to something internally and externally at the same time. And also establishes 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 some benchmarks in your life and moments that you'll remember. Songs associate us with places that we've been or something that was special at the time that it happened. So Maybe this will be one of those times. I hope so. Uh, but this song starts like this. And we're going to have an A count. And we're going to see if I can plow through the whole thing as much as possible. If I make mistakes, I'm going to come back and fix them unless I get lost or it's just so bad I have to stop and pick up where I am. And we'll talk about the punching in and out process in a little bit. So here we go from the top.
All right. Well, there were several things in there that worked really well and several things that uh, I wasn't 100% sure on. So what we're going to do now is going to go back and I'm going to listen through. I know there are some spots that I'm going to pick up. So we're going to work through the punching in process. But first, we're going to just start by listening and finding the spots. I kind of know where some are, but I don't remember them all. So now we're going to listen to what we just did. We, what I just did. check this part here. I'm not sure. I, I think I had a little flub there. So I'm going to punch in this first spot here. The red line you see here is the record line. The green line is a reference for starting and stopping. So over here I'm going to set a start point there. I'm going to listen from this point. a small section so I'm going to punch out around right there so you'll see here just a small area I'm going to give myself a little more headway here and I'm just going to play along with the track and and the play through the spot that I was not sure of and it's going to punch in and replace it here we go I didn't go far enough back. I, that repeats twice. I wasn't sure where I was at. So I'm going to back up a little more. Start it again. Too, so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to go back and do it again one more time. Welcome to the recording process. I got to listen to the, the spot there. Okay, it's a short turn there. Okay. Once more. Here we go. not back up as far. Thank you. 
if you notice, you don't really hear the punch. Now I'll do some fades and things in, in when I get back in the in the studio, but I'm actually going to do that once more because I can tell there's one part there that just it sounds un, unsure and it's not clear because that th this is where the band comes in after this <laughs> band's in there, so that's got to be really definite and it's still only piano. should have worked. Go listen to that. Back up. Now you'll notice there was kind of an, an abrupt change and the sound was different. That's okay because I only need a small section of that. I don't need the whole thing. And I'm going to listen again. Because all I need is that, and I'll clip out the other part. So we'll we'll get to that when we do the post. We're going to listen on and find the next spot. Just listening to see how far it went. Let me find it again here. very much of it. I'm going to go back here, find an out point, play it again. So again, my screen does not get get large enough to really do this effectively this way. I'm definitely going to work on improving this. This is really difficult to do on a small screen because my screen is moving all over the place as I'm doing this and not staying static like you're seeing on your end. play a little bit longer especially in a passage like that that's somewhat open sounding so it's not so you don't hear the edit really important to give yourself enough space and I'm backing up and also really important is to save all the time which is something I forget to do this actual this software actually has a f feature that you can have auto save and I think I have it set every two minutes because a lot can happen in a minute or two minutes especially when you're doing a lot of editing so here we go, going to pick up this punch. it's really important to keep in mind is that your rehearsal is going to make it really pay off when you're doing your track so you play consistently because if you don't you may have a tendency to play and then the other part was like you'll never match unless you're used to doing it the same way over and over and over again as if you've done it live in a in a performance forever so definitely want to keep that in mind. So let's listen to the punch. I was actually behind, but this has the ability to, 
Uh, it actually records a couple of seconds before, but I'm not going to take chance on that. I'm going to back up here and do it one more time. This is why recording takes so long when you have to pick up things. Now, obviously, I'm talking through it. It's taken a lot longer. If I was just doing it, it would have been done by now. I would have just breezed through it. But since I'm explaining it, it does take a little longer. to tell uh, where it stops because I can't hear the other track as well when it kicks in and out. So listen. listen. fix that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see if I can jog this track over a little bit here. I do that in this. Uh, let's try this. There we go. That'll help. Go back up here. I should show sometime how this works on this end because you'll understand why it's a little difficult to uh, control. Right, so I set my starting point. Drag that out a little longer. There we go. And find the spot again. I think that whole transition can be a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to go back to a starting point where I have a marker, so I have a pickup point. It'll make it easier to, to uh, just play through it. Like I said, this song has lots of repetition, and some areas have an extra bar at that point than this one does, and get a little confused. <laughs> What's always amazing is how different sound is from one moment to the next. I mean, I just played that, just re-recorded it, and you can hear it already sounds different sonically. So those, those types of things you have to be aware of, and there are some tips and tricks and things I'll show you how to mask them so it's not noticeable. But I also know 
in this piece that this is going to have lots going on at this point. It's not just piano and all the things that may stand out if it was a solo instrument won't be able to be noticed. And that doesn't mean that you you don't play them all proficiently and ac accurately and at the best of your ability. But it does mean that all the little things that you may not, you may spend a whole bunch of time fixing or recording, no one's going to know the difference, including you, later on. So pick and choose your battles when it comes to that. So let's listen on. And also, I also just keep setting endpoints so that I'm kind of get a reference where I'm starting from when I'm doing this type of punching in and listening to the piece. And also, I don't have to back up so much. So I, when I click on this green bar and keep resetting it, I'm, I'm waiting to hear the spot that I need to fix. And I just found it. So I'll back up there so I get a little more of a start. Come over here and click on the uh, punch in point. Now, you don't see the red line continuing on because it hasn't, I haven't hit an out point yet. The out point was over here prior, so you don't see anything until you set the out point. And now I'm going to play this a little bit and find the out point. that point because there were a couple things in there I didn't like so now I hit the out point and now you see the red line appear back up I'm gonna save and we're gonna punch in here we go <laughs> I'm lost <laughs> gotta back up and find my spot like I said because this repeats so often I'm not sure where I am sometimes, so here we go, one more time. up right at the beginning there so I'll do it again now I know where I'm at I don't have to back up as far here we go listen to see where I'm at. Okay, it's a repeat part. Apologies for that. Here we go. listen to that Now 
one thing I noticed because this part repeats the first time when it did the it had a, more of a staccato this one is more legato going in or didn't do so that's something in the arrangement that happens the first time but not the second time listening on Okay, so that could be a little cleaner. So we're going to clean that spot up there. Got to move my track around if I can. There we go. And back up and find that spot. Right there. reason I kept going so long is because that gets into an open part that be really obvious if there was a punch there and, and hard to mask or fix if I stop there so I'm going to record through it I will pull back this edit I won't use all of it but I want to make sure that I've got it covered in case that does pose a problem later on and this comes from experience you'll find that the more you do it the more you're going to know what to anticipate and I'm just pointing them out as they as I show you how this works. Okay, I had to figure out where I was because that's once again repetition there. I'm going to go back a little farther to get it started. softer part was definitely weaker but going into it seemed like fine we'll listen to it yeah definitely a little timing thing there But since we have these multiple tracks, it's there's a process of where I can edit all of them at the same time because we're recording three tracks at once. Uh, we've got the AKG 414 here, and then we've got the two condenser mics here. So when I make edits on one track, I want to make sure they're happening on all tracks at the same time. And we're going to cover that in the post section. Uh, going back to the ending here, one thing that also that I've become accustomed to uh, through time is that even though there's a click and a reference track going for rhythm and tempo and so on, when it comes to a part in the song that retards, like the ending of this, I just learn to ignore it and completely just put it out of my mind. So now listening to this end piece here, I'm going to turn the click off. The drum will stop automatically or close enough and I'm going to listen to the ending. Here we go. And we just let that ring and, I, and really let things ring for a long time because you never know what you want to do in the mix or 
And the, the worst thing is having a, a pedal come up and make a noise like that or something. You don't, it's unnecessary. You can just let it let it ring. You can fade it out however you want to later on. So give yourself a little excess there. Now, I can't say that that's the absolute best performance in the world, but this is all about showing how the song is constructed and also taking something even in a form that has been edited multiple times and punched in multiple times. Once this is all edited and put together, you won't be able to tell the difference. If this was more of a solo piece and the piano was dominant on its own throughout, I would do it differently. But I know all these things are going to be added to it. So therefore, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on stuff that no one's going to be able to tell or is going to make any difference as long as the timing and the pieces are in place, which I believe they are. So now we've covered how to record the, the track. And this may also change because once I add all the other instruments, I may come back and make some changes to this piano part. But because we've got a click in, in place and the only part that is really free and open is the ending where you do the whatever that is. And then also some parts like now, even though they're going to be by themselves, the click is still going for a reference of time. So it doesn't change completely. It keeps a flow of it going. And if you do it with feeling, you're going to work real kind of in and out of the click. The click is there as a reference, but not to be robotic. So that even though the click's playing, it doesn't mean you can't be extremely expressive. And you'll learn that uh, as you do it more. So I think we've got a good start on putting down this grand piano track for Kenny's song. It didn't take too long. Uh, once again, when you're doing this on your own, you're not talking through it and shooting videos at the same time. It'll go a lot quicker. But it's really important, once again, to review that you want to rehearse and make sure you know exactly what's going on. You want to prep the track so that you've got markers in there showing you where you are in the piece. Typically, if it was a song that had lyrics, then there would be some kind of scratch vocal to give you a reference point where you're at. Once again, I don't typically use any music because that's why you just don't see anything out because everything it, it for me is in my head if you use music you write things down and have references to that that's fine i i wish i could in in a way utilize those and sometimes i do but it's very rare because most of the stuff is in my head i'm just one of those guys that does it that way doesn't mean you have to do it that way uh, so this concludes this video if you're here watching uh for the first time this is our open sessions doing Kenny's song from start to finish. We've now concluded the grand piano part. And next step, we're going to bring it into the studio, fix some of our edits that we've done here, clean them up so we've got a really nice track there, and then start adding the next instruments, which will be bass and drums. And, and we'll work through that process as well. If you're here for the first time, please subscribe, ring the bell, tell your friends and your colleagues and all your buddies about it. And I really appreciate your time watching. I hope you're getting something out of this. And anything you have in the comments you want to ask me about or discuss, uh, I'd be happy to, to get back to you on that and build this uh, community that we have going here, learning about how to record music and how to make songs happen from start to finish. So that's it for today. Craig Colley signing off. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next in the next video.